Namaste and welcome to the Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Narsimhan. And we have somebody special today on the fourth day of the World Hindu Congress, the plenary session, closing ceremony. We still have a stalwart right here with us who lit the auditorium last night. He had more than 100 slides, but he delivered it in 40 minutes and everybody got the central message. So welcome to the show, Sri Mohandas Paiji. Oh my God, where do we start? I think it's a right. fabulous event. Thousands of people have come from all over the world to talk to each other, to understand the issues that are confronting the global Hindu community and to decide what they want to do for the future. Hindus want, need to understand we are 12% of humanity, 1.2 billion people and the world population of 8 billion. We have a GDP in India 3.49 trillion, maybe $1 trillion outside India. We are close to $5 trillion this year. And we are going to grow to $10 trillion by 2032, 2034. I think it's very important for people to understand that the growth of the world in the next 10, 12 years is going to be largely depend on India too. Incrementally, we'll make up 20, 25% of incremental growth globally. But we also need to understand that the world is in the midst of the digital revolution. And the digital revolution, India is going to be a dominant player. We are the third largest digital power in the world after the United States, China, and then India. And when the world changes because of the digital revolution, we're going to be right there. And I think it's very important for us to come together to understand where we are and participate in remaking the world. And in remaking the world, we shall bring compassion, we shall bring inclusiveness, and we shall bring our Hindu ethos and culture in the new world that has to emerge towards yeah. the rise of Asia and in the digital revolution. I see. The earlier post-war era is a era of the industrial revolution. Now in the digital revolution, we are global leaders. So all of this requires money, capital. How are the world's capital markets changing their views about so The world's capital markets will give money to those people who want superior returns. Superior returns in any economy depends on growth. And if India is growing at a fast pace the next 10 years, the growth will be here, so money will come. What we need is Indian entrepreneurs to go and bid and go and market for capital, which we have been doing for many years. It has to be done in the larger way. We have very transparent trading markets like the stock markets in India, which is more than 140 years old. Uh, we have a debt market which is local, but now we are becoming global. And I think India is well positioned. We have a banking system which is very, very good with clean you know, balance sheets. And I think if you take all of that, it is working. You know, we get about uh, 80 to $100 billion of FDI every year. We get $100 billion of remittances coming. We get $135 billion of cash coming in for software. $200 billion of IT software services. Export. So I think all this is playing to our strength. And I'm very, very confident because I've seen this grow from 1991. This is the CFO of Infosys that came right after Narsimha Rao Ji and Manmohan Ji opened up the economy. We have had a few patterns. We have the growth in remittances, growth in software exports, but consumption is also rising. And so there's a lot of imports that we are doing. No, no, I think the imports are more because of Indian traders. We can manufacture many of things you import from China. We have a trade deficit of $100 billion with China. And China is an export-oriented market. They will trade at lower prices, so our traders are trying to make more profits. Much of the industry is getting destroyed, but with the PLI scheme, we are going to manufacture more. We are the second largest manufacturer of mobile phones. The valuation could be 15-20%, you go to 30-40% when the glass factory comes up in Noida, which is already to be ready any time. So many things are happening across the country. 20 years ago, uh, Shinzo Abe took a chance on uh, Chief Minister Modi. And the uh, touch I looked last year was uh, Japan formed 75% of the FDI from a nation. Lots of money coming from Japan at a 1 or 2% interest rate. How do we generate more of that? Money will come if Indian entrepreneurs go and pitch for capital. Money is not going to come because somebody in Delhi is going to wave a van. And that is happening in them. With many of them to go, they are going raising capital. They are getting money. For example, into startups, we got about $140 billion from 2014 to 2022. So money is coming, not a constraint. But our ability to go and market for money is something that we must do in a big way. But you must also remember, we should be able to digest the money and invest the money that we want. There's no point taking surplus money if you can't invest. Our investment every year is about a trillion dollars. India's GDP has 31% investment, 29% savings. 31% investment, 3.4 trillion is more than a trillion dollars. There are only three countries in the world which invest more than a trillion dollars each year, the United States, China and India, and we are right there. 
maybe it should go up to 2 trillion in the next maybe 10 years. We need money for infrastructure. It's coming. So, sir started off with talking about assured returns and uh, returns. Not assured returns, decent, good returns. Good returns. Uh, the yin and yang is risk, right? How do you manage risk? Look, look, look. People are invested in China, one to two trillion dollars. What is the risk of China? You see what has happened? Yes. International investors understand risk. We don't have to bother about that. Okay. We don't have to bother about that. I think risk is getting all overplayed in India. I mean, you know, they put two trillion dollars into China. Are they able to get the money out of China now? What is China doing? So, all the risk, you, we must credit international investors understanding risk. We have to market, we have to show them, there's an enormous amount of, the Bombay Stock Exchange delivered about, I think, between 12 to 14 percent returns in dollar terms from 1991 till today, every year. It's the second largest returns that have come in the world after the US. And for the last 20 years, it's either been US or India number one in stock market returns and the index. Now that is unbelievable, right? India has got a bad image because of the negative narratives that are being created by malcontents, the lefties and others. That is what we have to counter. There's a lot of positive things happen and global investors understand that. They come to India, they meet people, they see the industry, they're well tuned in. It's only the global media which, uh, you know, writes wrong things about India. Uh, mostly written by this uh, Indians who have sold their souls to the West because they want minor positions in the West who have no pride in the country and who always focus on negative things. In a country of 1.4 billion people, there's something happening everywhere. We're four times the size of the United States. So some crime happens, you know, globalize it and say the whole of India is doing their rubbish. So I think all this rubbish is there. We have to counter if, that. If you like this episode, you should definitely watch Sir with Abhijit Chawda. So I'm actually pitching for Abhijit Chawda. Two hour episode. Amazing facts, amazing details. We need to put the correct narrative and the correct yeah. facts in the global media uh, because the global media has been bought over uh, negatively by Soros and others who are trying to push the narrative because he's funding a lot of these NGOs yes. and that's the big danger. So we got to create more NGOs and we got to challenge them. The problem is Indians have been a beaten people for long. They think whatever published the New York Post, the New York Times is, uh, is current Washington. They publish rubbish. You yeah. can see the uh, some of the edits uh, that's come there which is based on false information. BBC carries on a campaign against India based on false data. We must challenge them. It's only when we challenge people I think then uh, we will we'll get respect. We will go down to people, all this uh, malcontent, even fake narrators, then uh, they will write a shot. Because all these people are being pushed out of power in Delhi. You see, you must understand, after independence, the imperial rulers were replaced by another set of imperial rulers who follow the same thing to suppress Indian people and keep us poor. Now, in the last 10 years, they've been pushed out of power. They have no access to power. They're all part of the same Delhi Lutez gang. How is 2024 going to look like for them and us? Well, I think 2024, the people of India will decide. If they feel that Prime Minister Modi has done more for them than any government, they'll vote for him. And right now, I think he has an edge because the opposition, even though they come together with 27 parties, don't seem to have a coherent agenda. They're talking at cross purpose. They've got to go to act together. But let's say something. We need a good opposition. Every country requires an opposition. We are a democracy. So I think there is going to be a contest. There will be a clash of ideas. There will be a contest. The Indian people will decide. Thank you very much, Ramanda Ji. That was kind of you. you. It's just amazing that he took the time to be here. And thanks to Sri Ayuji for having this show. And uh, thank you, Mohandas Ji, once again. Uh, so please, uh, viewers, like, subscribe, here, and man? share this video. Well, uh, I hope to see you again in the next episode. Uh, so, yes, thank you. Now.